great. Good morning. Nice to see you. How are you today? Lovely to be here. Um, welcome. I wonder, do you have any habits? Maybe good habits or even bad habits? Well, today will be very interesting because we're going to look at the language of habits, um, looking at language, vocabulary, idioms, some listening tasks as well, and having some discussions about what exactly are good and bad habits. Oh, and how do you change a habit? This lesson could be an absolute lifesaver, game changer. It could change your whole life. <laughs> Well, at least keep you entertained for about an hour or so. <laughs> Great, let's, uh, let's kick off, let's get going. Fantastic, great, nice to see you here. So um, as I was saying, today's uh, topic is all about habits. I'll come over here. Um, looking forward to it. It's going to be some very, there's going to be some very interesting discussions. Um, a quick hello to people. We've got Johnny Beck is here. Good morning, sir. Arda, hello, nice to see you. Uh, Hong Yun Xuan, hi there, good morning. Uh, Irene, hello, or Irene, sorry, say it properly. <clears throat> nice to see you. Rahul Bramstad, I can't pronounce that. Bramskatria, <laughs> excuse me. Sophia, nice to see you. <clears throat> You're on the east coast of the USA. That's nice, that's great, good. Um, who else is here? Dip, and hello from Bangladesh, nice to see you here, Dip. Joanne from Poland. You obviously like the Smurfs, I can tell. Brilliant. Um, guys from Facebook. Hello from Vietnam, Don. That's nice to see you here. And Hus and Boy. Glad to see you again in the live sessions. Brilliant. Good to see you here. Let me just move that. As I said, the topic today is, yes, habits. Talking about different kinds of habits that we may have um, and things like that. Um before we begin, I'd just like to share with you an email I got. Um, this was a while back, a few weeks ago. It was from um, Thanusri. And Thanusri said, Hi Keith, hope everything is well with you. I'm writing this to inform you I got my desired score in speaking. Hooray. That is a seven, which I sat. Oh, this was in April, right? I had been stuck. That's great English. I had been stuck at 6.5 for three years. Holy moly, three years, right? I mean, I think often the problem there is people's study technique might be the problem. I had been stuck at 6.5 for three years and decided to purchase your course in March. And I did it. Within one month, your course helped me to achieve the score. I'm really thankful for, cre for creating such an amazing course and I recommend it to many of my other friends who are struggling to achieve their goals. Thank you once again, Mr. Keith. Keep up the good work. Brilliant. Thank you, uh, Thanos Sri. That was really nice to hear that. Such a nice email. And I think, you know, when people are stuck at a level, it's, it's often to do with their study technique. Maybe they're not studying the right way. Um, so that's great that the course really helped you out. Brilliant. Nice news. The course he's talking about is this one, is the IELTS Speaking Success Get a Band 7, um, which is a very structured course to help you not only get the language you need, but also the tips and techniques and strategies you need for that band 7. So you can go and check that out um, through the links um, on my website. You can find the course. The course is in two places. It's on Udemy and it's on my website, it's the same course, you can follow either one, it doesn't really matter. Okay, brilliant. Let me just go through briefly what we're going to do today so that you know today's um, topic and what's coming up. We're going to talk about habits, as I mentioned, okay? So we'll kick off with some vocabulary that I've spelt incorrectly, big typo, excuse me about that. 
we're going to look at some vocabulary. Um, we're going to look at good and bad habits and have a bit of a discussion about what really makes a good or a bad habit, right? Um, smoking, probably a bad habit, right? We've got a listening task for you to develop your listening skills and uh, get more exposed to the language. Oh, I've got a nice tool for you today. It's all, well, shall I give it away? It's to do with podcasts. So if you're into podcasts, there's a very, very good one I'm going to show you today in the tools section. Idioms, we'll do a short section about idioms as well. And of course, we'll finish up with a review. Kahoot is back. So we'll be playing a game at the end to make sure that you are staying awake keeping you on your toes um, so that, you know, to make sure you're learning as we go through the lesson. So when the vocabulary and the language comes up, do make a note, write it down so you can study later. OK, so that is all of that. Nice habits. Also, just to let you know um, that after the class, you can also get the study notes from my website um it's all over here where is it my website it's the keithspeakingacademy.com if you go to keithspeakingacademy.com you can find the free live lessons in the navigation and you can download all of the um the pdfs you can study the lesson online or you can download the pdf of my lesson notes um and study in your in your own time fantastic so do join us as well if you like Facebook, you can find me on Facebook. There is also a Facebook group. Um, if you want to come and join us, Keith's Mastermind Community for IELTS Speaking. Lots of interesting stuff happening over there. So come and join us as well. Um, that's Facebook. What else is there? YouTube. If you're on YouTube, then do <laughs> subscribe and turn on notifications. Find out about new upcoming videos. I'll tell you about Saturday's video a bit later. And also, if you haven't checked out my new YouTube channel, just over there, um, it's basically just a short channel, right? So these are very short videos at the moment focused on pronunciation. Um, they're nice. They're quick. They're short, simple answers. You can um, practice your pronunciation with that. So go and check them out. Nice. Excellent. So let me just check in and see how you're all doing. Edwin says subscribed. Great. We've got people from Kazakhstan. Nice to see you. Armala asks, is your background picture made by your daughter? Yes, it is. Yes, I should turn this way. Better for my neck. It is. Um, she made that very abstract. Nice, right? <laughs> Sufi says, hi from Oromia. This is my 26th version of your live class. Wow, you've been to 26 live lessons. Wow. Mm, hats off. Respect. Thank you very much. Uh, Viroin um, from Iran. Hi from Iran. Great. Captain Steel. Seriously, Captain Steel has subscribed all already. Um, and I was going to point out, yes, Facebook, right? You guys on Facebook um, from Vietnam. You'll notice your name doesn't appear, right? That's because Facebook automatically um, anonymizes your name, takes away your name. You have to give Facebook the permission for your name to appear in live streaming. Um, so if you go to your Facebook account and look at the settings, you can actually give Facebook permission and then your name will appear, right? Um, go and check it out. And if you want to, your name to appear, maybe you don't. Maybe you'd rather be anonymous. I don't know. HLN says, do you have a podcast? No, I don't. I'm going to talk to you about a really nice podcast today. I don't have a podcast. I would love to do a podcast because I love the radio. Um, so maybe I, I will. Why are you saying happy birthday? Deepa says happy birthday. Hey, it's not my birthday. <laughs> Thank you, but it's not my birthday. My birthday is in August, right? The middle of August. So uh, hold your horses. Not my birthday yet. We've got hello from South Korea. 
Steve says the Euro was over. Uh, it was indeed. Well done, Italy. Well done, Italy. Nice job, Italy. <laughs> Not to worry. There's plenty of beautiful things in the world still to look at. OK, guys, let's kick in. Let's kick off. We're going to talk about habits, right? Um, so the first thing I'm going to look at is vocabulary spelt badly. <laughs> so let me switch over here. Habits. Now, and I said at the start of this lesson, and a little bit tongue in cheek, kind of a bit joking, right? Tongue in cheek, tongue in cheek is joking. A bit tongue in cheek, but a little bit seriously um, that this could change your life. Because when I discovered the power of habits and when I really understood habits, wow, it did change my life a lot. And one of the key things I learned was that we are the sum of our habits. There is a, a quote from, I think it's Aristotle, who talks about something similar. Basically, the idea is, who are you? Who are you? You are just all of your habits, right? The person you are today is the sum of all of your habits throughout your life right? So if you spent a, a life of getting up early, working hard, then today you're a hard working person, right? Doesn't mean you're a rich person, but those habits of working hard means you're a very industrious, hard working person. If you spent a life of being lazy, um, eating a lot of bad food, then you'll be a lazy, unhealthy person, it's all about habits. It's very interesting. Um, let's look first of all at English vocabulary before we before we dive deep into the idea of habits. Um, so useful vocabulary. How do we express habits in in English? Well, I think the most one of the most common ones is to say I tend to, because I tend to means I usually, often do this. So. I tend to get up early in the morning, right? Um, I often get up early in the morning. That's a habit. Just notice the pronunciation. Um, I tend to, I tend to get up. Because you're stressing get up and tend, the two becomes to. I tend to get up. Can you say that? I tend to get up. I tend to get up early in the morning. Great. Notice you can use a pause to help your fluency. I tend to get up, pause, early in the morning. It's great. That's, that's nice fluency, right? If you can make a whole chunk, I tend to get up early in the morning, that's great. But if that's difficult, do it step by step. I tend to get up early in the morning. Lovely. Or you can say, I like to. I like to. Do you remember last week we talked about I like watching TV means I enjoy it. And I like to watch TV means it's a habit or a choice. So talking about habits, we can say I like to. I like to make my bed as soon as I get up, as soon as I have got up. Yeah, OK. I like to make my bed as soon as I have got up or as soon as I get up. Both are OK. Um, I like to eat a piece of fruit in the morning, right? Most days around 11 a.m. I have my 11s in Britain. I don't know if we still do this, but we used to have a break 11 o'clock in the morning and it's called elevenses, right? Maybe a cup of tea and a biscuit or a piece of fruit. Um, and I like to have a, an apple or a piece of fruit in the morning, right? I like to. It's kind of a habit of choice. We can also say to do something out of habit, right? Um, I get up early every day out of habit. It's not true. I don't get up early every day. I get up early most days, to tell you the truth. But I get up early every day out of habit. Nice way of expressing it. 
And here we're introducing the word habit, right? So I do something out of habit. Again, notice out of, the of is unstressed, so it becomes of, out of, out of. Put it together, out of habit. I do that out of habit. Yeah. Um, what do I do out of habit? I, I check my email um, almost every hour, just out of habit. Yeah. I check Facebook out of habit. It's just a habit I have. Good. It's, no, it's not good. Don't check it at uh, Facebook all the time. By force of habit is another expression, right? Um, I get up early every day by force of habit. By force of habit. So practice with me. By force of habit. Out of habit. I get up at seven o'clock out of habit. What about you? No. I get up at seven o'clock by force of habit. And in, in reality? Oh, interesting what time you get up. Now, <laughs> I'm sure we can share some, we can share some ideas over here. Explain again, out of habit. Do something out of habit means it is a habit. I do something because it has become a habit. Right, Albert says, I check the phone in the morning out of habit. Lovely. Practice speaking out aloud as well. Dan says, I drink a cup of coffee every morning by force of habit. Lovely. Great. Lan says, I work out every day by force of habit. Every day. Wow. Great. I watch all kinds of movies and series out of habit. Yeah, yeah, just out of habit. Something you do out of habit. Vu Rose. Hello again. I get up at six o'clock out of habit. Great. What does it mean again? Just... It's a habit that you have adopted or taken on. Um, by force of habit, right? I start my day with some music by force of habit. The, the slight connotation is that you almost can't control it. It's become a habit that you can't stop, right? So by force of habit, I start my day with music by force of habit. It could be, but I think by force of habit, because it's force, it tends to be something that maybe you don't like as much, right? But not necessarily. It's something that has become so... Oh, how do we explain this? It's something that's become so ingrained or that you do so often that it's become a it's become a habit but it, it sometimes can be used as slightly negative right um you know I, I smoke three cigarettes a day by force of habit without thinking it's just automatic okay it can be positive but it is often a negative one by force of habit because the idea of force is you've not chosen to do it right okay for example, right, if you say, I go to bed late out of habit, that's great. That would be a nice one to say, I go to bed late by force of habit, suggesting it might not be a good thing. Okay. Okay, great. In the habit of is another one. I'm in the habit of doing something. I'm in the habit of getting up early. I'm in the habit of drinking tea in the morning. Um occasionally I have a cup of coffee but I'm you know usually I'm in the habit of drinking tea or it has become a habit it has become a habit great so Joni Beck I get up at four o'clock out of habit wow that is early very very early Christina I get up at five and read out of habit brilliant great habits great 
<laughs> okay, excellent. Good. I watch Keith's videos out of habit. <laughs> Ali, your avatar was like me seconds ago. That is bizarre. That is strange. Thank you, Ali. <laughs> Navi has said, has said, I watch Keith live by force of habit. I hope it's a good thing, though, right? I hope it's a good thing. <clears throat> okay, let's move on. Now, so the following are a little bit if something is bad, right? If you have, let me add this, if you have a bad habit, you can use the following, right? So when we say, I have a habit of, this is normally for a bad habit, yeah? Um, or I've fallen into the habit of. So I have a habit of biting my nails, uh, right? It's not good. It's not good at all. Um, I have a habit, sorry, I have a habit of biting my nails, um, of what else? Um, reading in the dark. Maybe that's, apparently that's not very good. Or I don't know, what other bad habits do I have? I'm sure I've got lots. Not listening carefully to my wife. It's true. Sometimes I need to listen more carefully. I, I have a I have a habit of not listening, right? I have a habit of talking and telling rather than listening. I have a habit of biting my nails. So I have a habit of is a negative thing, right? Not a positive thing. So these are all for bad habits. Likewise, I've fallen into the habit. Because it's something you haven't chosen, it's something you've fallen into, it's a negative. Yeah, I've fallen into the habit of biting my nails. I've fallen into the habit of getting up late every day. So lazy. It's not true, but for example, right? Okay. Um, let's have a look. Yeah, so I have a habit of playing video games, meaning it's not a good thing. Lynn says, I have a habit of getting up late in the morning. Exactly. Sahar, I have a habit of eating junk food. Very good. Yeah, these are all bad habits you've got. Pradeep, I have a habit of cutting trees. Really? Why do you cut the trees? Or do you mean cut down trees? As in cut down, maybe cut down trees. Um, I have a habit of watching TV every day, right? Good. Abdo says, I have a habit of hesitation, right? Interesting. Navi, I have a habit of sleeping in too much, right? Very nice English, that. Sleeping in, right, is to stay in bed too long or for a longer than usual time. Brilliant, good. So all of these habits, bad habits as well as good habits, and of course, if you have a bad habit, you may want to stop that. Different ways to talk about stopping a habit, right? If you want to stop a habit, you can say, you can say, I'm trying to break this habit. I'm trying to kick the habit or this habit. I'm trying to give up this habit. So just for me to practice, I have a habit of biting my nails, but I'm trying to break the habit. Right? I have a habit of not listening to people carefully, but I'm trying to kick the habit. Okay, what about you? <clears throat> <laughs> Our sad says, I have a habit of thinking too much. I know. Me too. Me too. Elif has a habit 
of delaying her decisions. Right, got it. Mm. Uh, Gayatri Harish says, I have fallen into the habit of overeating. You and everybody in the time of COVID, I think we're all overeating. But I'm trying to kick that. I'm trying to kick that. Not off. I'm just trying to kick that habit. <clears throat> I'm trying to kick that habit. <clears throat> exactly. Also, Zani, you're right. We can say get rid of. I'm trying to get rid of. Yeah, to get rid of the habit. <clears throat> yes. Also, can we say get out of the habit? I'm trying to get out of the habit. Yes, you can. Let me add that one. Because you're in a habit, so you can also get out of the habit. What else have we got? Stella, H. Stella says, I'm trying to give up drinking. Good. Stay healthy. Um, Faris says, I'm trying to break this habit of playing games while online class. Yeah, that's a bad habit. Please stop it. <laughs> Try and get rid of that habit. <clears throat> Good. I'm trying to kick watching too much TV. Yeah. It's good. You would say, I think, because otherwise it's not too clear, but I would make it clear, right? I'm trying to kick the habit of watching too much TV, right? Just make it much clearer. Uh, <clears throat> Excellent. Good. Good. We've got lots of them there. Brilliant. Let's, um, let's move on briefly. <clears throat> Just talk about adjectives to describe habits. So these are common adjectives, common collocations, if you like. So if you have a bad habit, you can also say, I have an annoying habit. I have an annoying habit of biting my nails. Or maybe you have a nasty habit. If it's nasty, it's like really bad and disgusting. Um, so biting your nails, right? I have a nasty habit of biting my nails. <coughs> I have a nasty habit of eating fast food every day. You know, it's, it's a disgusting, bad habit. If you want to talk about good habits, right? I have a habit of studying English every morning. Um, or I have a, an endearing habit. Possibly endearing. Endearing means it's a bit like it makes somebody like you. If it's endearing, it, it makes other people like you. So you have an endearing habit of following my live lesson. I think that's an endearing habit. It makes me like you, right? Somebody who listens carefully, that's an endearing habit. If you listen carefully, it makes people like you. So endearing is just that idea. It makes you like dear, makes you a, a kind, gentle, dear person. Dear Keith, right? People like you. So you have an endearing habit. Um, yes. Now, notice you can also use uh, smoking or drinking as adjectives, right? I need to kick... Um, I need to, where's the thingy? Here, sorry, I'm just going to change the font. <clears throat> I need to kick my smoking habit, right? So notice here, it's uh, smoking is an adjective, my smoking habit. You cannot use this with all of them. There are some that are typically used. So smoking habit, drinking habit, um, cocaine habit. I don't know why that came into my head. A drug habit, possibly, right? Those are the most common ones. Um, you don't use it with everything, but those are kind of the common adjectives. Okay, Mostly, I guess, mostly drugs, right? In some way. Okay. Brilliant. So those are lots of adjectives to describe habits. Good. Let's check in. I'm sure you've got lots of ideas. Looks 
Steve, we've got oh Pradeep, I need to hone my speaking skills. Yes, <laughs> good. Steve says I need to kick. Sorry, not kick off, just kick. Right, I need to kick. Kick off is like to begin. I don't need to kick off. You, need, you don't need to begin. You need to kick some of my nasty habits, such as staying up late or doing everything carelessly. Perfect. Very, very nice. Good. Um, Guri says, making good things is an endearing habit. Making good things, yes. When you say making, it sounds like constructing. Um, if it's general activities, I would say doing, right? Doing good things is an endearing habit. Guri, thank you so much. You help us so much by showing people the perfect English, right? Good Doing good things is an endearing habit. Lovely. Two, I have an endearing habit of helping people. Yes. Now, I'm laughing because it sounds strange when you say, you know, I have an endearing habit. Um, it, I think you often talk about other people. He has an endearing habit. Because um, here you're assuming that other people like you. Right? It's a bit funny. It's nice, but it's a bit funny. I have an endearing habit of helping people. Right? I would say that about somebody else. I think, you know, my neighbour, it's great. She has this endearing habit of helping people if they need something. Yeah. <laughs> but nice. Thank you. Great. Again, too. Great opportunity to show people the 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 nuance or the slightly slightly different meaning these words have, right? It's all in the practice. And this is great because this is how you learn deeper English is by practicing, making a mistake, getting some feedback from maybe from a teacher, and then you think, ah, okay, now I know. <laughs> <laughs> Deal, Preet. Come on, I'm not sharing that. <clears throat> Biju is again. This is it's funny. I have an endearing habit of following well-known public speakers. Yeah, well, I guess you're learning from them, right? But again, I would say that more with, with you have an endearing habit. <clears throat> Mano says, I want to kick my overthinking habit. That works well, right? Really good. Just remember habit is a single B. Just one B. Unlike, you're probably confusing the Hobbit, Bilbo Baggins. But I want to kick my overthinking habit. Great, nice. Hussein, I have to kick my drinking habit. Great, please do. Now, Luong, okay, I need to kick my playing games habit. You see, that doesn't work. Um, and I, I don't think there's a rule on which adjectives work. So I think smoking, drinking, drugs, yes. Um, but a lot of other things like this one, it's great. Again, really good. Well done, Luang, for trying. It's really good, but it doesn't quite work. Um, <clears throat> I think what might be better, I need to kick my video game habit. I need to keep my video game habit. <clears throat> and then it's a bit clearer. It works a bit better. I need to keep my video game habit. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. That's great. Really nice. <clears throat> <laughs> what else have we got? I think we've got lots there. <clears throat> Why? This is interesting. I need to keep my talkative habit. So you talk too much, right? That's nice. I think that's that's creative English. I think that's very nice. Yes. <clears throat> Jahan, this is good. Praising people is an endearing habit. Re remember your article, but that's really nice. That's a really good example, right? Praising people is an endearing habit. It makes them like you. <laughs> Lovely. Okay. Brilliant. Nice. Guys, we're going to change for a moment let me i can feel there's a frog in my throat <laughs> um it's in there isn't it <clears throat> let me have some water just a moment <laughs> my jingles are too low <clears throat> how does he do that when he's drinking water 
amazing. Okay, um, let's have a look. What's coming up next? <clears throat> oh, we're going to order habits. Okay, <clears throat> let me show you this. <clears throat> now then. Hmm. Okay, how does this work? What's the best way for me to show you? I'll show you here. We're going to talk about good and bad habits. So if I come back to my plan here, we're going to talk about good and bad habits. Which habits do you think are good and which are bad? I'm going to show you some habits, right, basically, and I want you to put them in order. The best habits and the worst habits. Which ones are good, which ones are bad, right? And we're going to do this via a website. <clears throat> so if I just bring this website over here, oh, that's cool, isn't it? Have you ever checked out Mixit? Mixit is cool. This is my over here. Mixit, <clears throat> Mix Kit. Um, it's kind of a graphic media company, but you can get this um, screen, not browser, tab image. Every time you open your tab, you get a new picture. It's really cool. I like it. Look, then you get a different picture. And every time you open your Chrome, you get a nice different picture. Some really nice graphic art. I, I love it. Anyway, <laughs> by the by, uh, we're going to go. I'm going to use something called Mentimeter <clears throat> to help us do this. And Mentimeter, um, let's do the habits one over here. And you're going to see, and I'm going to let you participate in a moment, right? Let's present this up here. <clears throat> Which habits are the best? And we have to put these in order. Now, this was uh, me. Oh, you guys are already in there. <laughs> right, okay. If you're in there, um, I'm going to share with you. One moment, one moment, one moment. Does this work? You're ahead of the game. Give me a moment then. Whilst, whilst you're doing this, some of you probably don't know what's happening. <clears throat> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Wait. Uh, dear, right. Bear with me a moment. Bear with me. I've now lost all of my screens. Come on. Scenes, scenes. Okay, ordering these habits from best to worst. Um, I'm going to ask you guys to go here. <clears throat> okay, um, I think what's happened is the moderators have already shared the uh, <clears throat> they've already shared the the link. So if you follow this link, and it should be in your windows now, <clears throat> um, follow the link, and you will then be able to vote. So what I've done is I've taken these, it's another link, and another one here. Ah, bear with me. How can I be so badly organized? You caught me out going so quickly. <laughs> That's it, Keith. Blame everybody else. <clears throat> Terrible habit. So yes, these are the things, right? Getting up early, drinking orange juice, reading newspapers, smoking, jogging, playing, making your bed, playing games. Which ones are the good ones and which ones are the bad ones? So if you follow the link into menti.com <clears throat> um, and then just make your choice and we will be able to see, people are already voting, I can see. We're going to see how it comes up. So let me share this on the website. Which habits are the best? So as you're voting, it shows. We've got 94 people already. Great. The other option, you can go to menti.com and use the code 76667381. Reading newspaper is not available. Ah, yes. It's got playing games twice. Excuse me about that. Sorry about that. Yeah, as Giorgio points out, that's my mistake. Excuse me. Don't worry. 
So it seems getting up early is the big one that people think is the uh, the healthiest. It's a shame about the newspaper. Hap, thank you very much. Smoking is definitely down at the bottom. Right. Wow, 150 people, but the results are not really changing. Everyone is having very similar opinions. <clears throat> Smoking at the bottom. I was interested about newspapers. So it's a shame about that, but never mind. Drinking orange juice is right in the middle. Jogging, second best. I guess for your health, mental health and physical health, right? <clears throat> Making your bed. That's what I'm going to talk about in a minute. Right, okay. Fantastic, good. So let me put them, let me take a, a snapshot of that. And let's uh, talk about them a little bit. Bear with me. Okay. <clears throat> so that's great. Let me move back to where I was just a moment ago. So the results that you've got there, incredible, right? So everybody said getting up early is the most, the best habit. I wonder why. I wonder why people think that is such a good habit. <clears throat> I mean, there is a lot of research on this, that getting up early... Um, your things like your willpower is stronger in the morning and throughout the day your willpower goes down and your energy goes down so if you make the most of the morning then you have you can be more productive i think also psychologically this idea that you're ahead of everybody else i got up at th four o'clock everybody is sleeping i'm ahead of the game also, it helps you feel, you know, you're you're going to be ahead of other people. So it seems to be a good habit. Jogging. Well, yes. I mean, it's debatable, right? I think as a form of exercise, then absolutely. It can get you physically fit, mentally fit as well, mentally healthy. Um, it is very bad for your knees. So the continual pounding of your knee on the ground or your leg on the ground it's it can be damaging for your knees there are other exercises which might be better but it depends on every person right of course if you love jogging that's the best exercise for you but i guess the idea is any kind of exercise whether it's swimming cycling walking jogging good habits right making your bed again apparently there's something called knock-on habits. So a knock-on habit is a bit like a domino, right? It's the knock-on effect, basically. That if you do one small habit, you feel good. And that starts, it helps you do other good habits. So if you start your day organising your bed, making your bed, you kind of subconsciously feel that you are well organized and therefore you organize your work better you organize your life better there's a knock-on effect that that one small habit helps you snowball into other um, even better habits so there's a lot of discussion i'm not sure if there's much research on it but there's lots of discussion that making your bed is a fantastic habit and it's so easy right to do you can get into the habit really quickly Drinking orange juice. Well, I'm going to be a bit controversial. I don't think that's a good habit. Lots of people think it's good because it's healthy, right? Orange juice is full of sugar. And if you detach the juice from the orange and you just have the juice, 
it's a huge amount of sugar that goes into your body and you get a sugar rush. You get this huge rush of sugar and energy, but then you go down. Much better habit is to eat an orange because the orange juice and the pulp, the, 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 the orange flesh together allows that sugar to go slowly into your body and you avoid that peak and fall. So an even better habit is eating an orange rather than drinking orange juice. I know, I know that it's everybody thinks orange juice is great. Um, yes and no. <laughs> playing games. Well, again, I would say playing games is a great habit. Helps you relax, helps you enjoy yourself. Um, it helps you maybe communicate with other people and play with other people. It can be a fantastic habit. Playing video games too much, that's when it becomes a bad habit if you're doing it too much. But in moderation, could be good, right? Smoking for your health, it's got to be a bad habit. For the secondary smoking of other people, got to be a bad habit. For your own personal mental health and stress, yes, maybe it helps, but... I'm not so sure. <laughs> what else? Yeah, so Guarav, you make a good point. Kids not playing games. They enjoy gaming. Kids need to play games, right? I mean, games doesn't have to be video games. It could be football. It could be TIG in the playground. Some games can be really good. Monica, I made orange juice by myself without sugar in it. Monica, how do you make orange juice without sugar? Because oranges contain lots of sugar. I mean, yes, they're natural sugars. They're not added sugars, but the sugar's in the orange juice already. I agree. Even worse, right, is the, the orange juice you buy in the shop. I mean, that's even worse because that's just full of sugar. So my rule of thumb, never buy orange juice in the shop. Making your own is better, but actually eating the orange is even better. <laughs> I'm not an expert, but that's my tuppence. Orange is more natural than orange juice. Yes, exactly. That is true. Yes. Good. Great. Um, getting up early is best. Okay. Yeah, Katie says board games. Fantastic. I mean, playing board games, I think, can be a great way to relax, a great way to bring the family together, right? So, Mariam, that's the point. It can mean both. It can mean either video games or other games. So it depends, right? <laughs> great, Nathra. Well, key is that drinking water is the best, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> okay, what else have we got? Here's a good habit. I should have this one up. Morning prayers and meditation. Great habits. I totally agree. A bit like making your bed. Helps you get in the moment, in the now, and close to your, your God, our God. Start by meditation, says Sana. Great. Fruit has a lot of sugar. Yes, correct. Exactly. And exactly. So fructose, right, is sugar. Orange has fructose and that is the sugar. Um, good. Good point here. For kids playing games might lead to bad behavior. Well, possibly. It depends on the game. Um there, there has been actually a lot of research about video games and the shooting games, you know, like Fortnite, that it doesn't lead to violent behavior. Um, there is no evidence that kids playing the shooting games leads them to becoming violent themselves. It's just, there's no, no evidence for that. Getting up early is a very good habit. Great. Love your avatar. <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> and here's another important one I should have put in. Developing a healthy sleep routine is a good habit. Yeah, 
absolutely it is very 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 important our sleep as well right okay lots of things right interesting discussion what makes a good habit and a bad habit um we've talked about food we've talked about games um we've talked about physical exercise and activities as well let's move on um let's move on i'm going to move on to this topic right so how to change a habit um if you've got a bad habit there are different ways to to get rid of a habit in fact most of the research shows that rather than kicking a habit that's very difficult it's actually much easier to change a habit right so if you want to get rid of a habit what you should do is replace it with another habit right this is what i've learned <laughs> If you have a bad habit, um, don't try to kick it. Just replace it with a better habit. Because apparently it's incredibly difficult to kick a habit. And if you've tried to stop smoking, you'll know this, how hard it can be. However, um, if you can replace that habit with something else, it's easier. And this is why smokers, they maybe they take nicotine patches or they have the, uh, the e-smoke, the e-cigarette that has less nicotine. And so they replace that habit with another habit, something that is healthier for them. So I'm going to talk about this. What we're going to do is actually do a listening exercise. Where, um, we're going to listen to somebody talking about changing habits and you're going to do something for me. So let me come down. Here we go. Listening. You're going to listen to someone talking about changing a habit. I want you to fill in the gaps with one or two words. Excuse me a moment. So these are the questions. Let's see if I can get all five on one page. Okay, have a look at these first. I'll just read them through and then we will listen second. So there are blank stages to changing a habit, stages or steps. If you see a blank in your fridge, that can be a cue to take one. Rewards give us a sense of blank. To change a habit, either you take the cue away or you blank the routine. Drinking beer might be a good way of relieving blank, right? So start, as in your IELTS listening, it's the same skill, the same technique. Read the questions first. Start thinking what kind of words could go in here, right? So think about, is it a verb, a noun, an adjective? So number one could be a noun, could be an adjective, possibly. Number two, you know it's a noun, right? Must be a noun. It must be. You see a, ah, so it's a thing. Number three, you know it's a noun. A sense of it must be a noun after that. Um, number four, you blank. It must be a verb must be a verb take have offer refuse check yeah anything so it's really useful to think about the word and the kind of word that you need to fill in the gap right think about the kind of word and if you can guess the word that might help you but also all of this is activating your schemata it's getting you ready for the listening you know a little bit what it's going to be about Okay, great. So some of you have got some ideas already. Great. For example, Sifidin says many, possibly. Three, proudness. Ah, proudness. Is that a word? I think you mean, I think you mean pride, Artyom. Gives you a sense of pride, I think. Yes. Um, 
Ashraf says chocolate. If you see a chocolate in your fridge, you're uh, revealing what's in your fridge, Ashraf. I don't know if I've got chocolate. I have chocolate in my fridge, but clearly you have a lot of chocolate in your fridge. <laughs> OK, so you're thinking and now we're going to do the listening. So if you're ready, let me find the listening and we will listen together. Let's get ready. Here we go. Let's begin. If you want to change a habit, you need to know the three stages of every habit, the cue, the routine and the reward. First, you need to identify the cue. For example, imagine you've fallen into the habit of drinking a couple of beers every evening when you get home from work. You're getting fatter and want to kick the habit. The cue might be a time a place, something you see, or maybe something someone says. For example, you get home and think, it's 6 p.m., time for a beer. Or your wife, with all good intentions, says, you're home, fancy a beer? Perhaps you open the fridge and see the nice cold beers waiting for you, and that's the cue to take one and have a refreshing drink. The routine is having the drink, and the reward is the satisfaction that drink gives you. There are different things you can do to change this habit. Two of the most common ones are, first, remove the cue. Second, change the routine with something that gives the same reward. The first step could be to remove the cues, I mean, hide the beers, out of sight, out of mind, right? Another step could be change the routine with something that gives the same reward. But to do that, you must know what the reward really is. So if having a drink breaks the boredom, you could replace it with watching a film on TV or taking your dog for a walk. If the reward is quenching your thirst, you could replace the drink with a different cold and refreshing drink. So... What bad habit do you want to change and how will you do it? Right. <clears throat> Excellent. Well done. So I'm watching your comments and uh, fantastic. Lots of very, very good, correct answers. OK, brilliant. So let's put in, um, let me find some of your answers if I can. So number one, we had, there are, Eunice says different. UH says quite a few. Um, in the end, the answer was was not one. <laughs> what else did we have? Various could be. I think this is when you were guessing. But then when we actually began, where are we? Here we go. Merin says three. There are three stages to changing a habit. Excellent. Very, very good. Number two, as Hugh says, if you see a beer. Yes, not chocolate, but if you see a beer. Number three, reward gives us a sense of, Yogesh says, satisfaction. Exactly. Very good. To change a habit, right, either you take away the cue or you... Alice says, change the routine. Well done, Alice. Nice one. And lots of you got that right as well. Um, drinking beer might be a good way of relieving. Relieving what? Relieving V says boredom. The boredom or boredom. Exactly. Great. That was it. Good. Now, there are different words you can use. Um, but those were the answers that I had. Three stages, beer, satisfaction, change, um, relieving your boredom, the boredom. Um, yes, you could say alter the routine or change the routine. 
So there were maybe one or two other words you could use, but this was these were the main words that came up. OK, fantastic. Well done. Good. Lots of good answers. I can see them all coming through. Well done. Nice. So we've listened once. Right now we're going to listen again, but we're going to go into much more detail. Um, so what's going to happen next is next. I want you to listen to the passage and fill in the gaps. So here you've actually got the tape script. And as you listen, this is much easier. We're going to fill in the gaps here. We've actually got eight different questions. So as you listen, I will scroll the script and I want you to try and put the answers here in the comments section. So we're going to listen again to the whole thing and write down your answers for number one to number eight. Right. Very good question coming up here. Beer is uncountable. How can it have a ah before it? Fantastic question, because beer is both uncountable and countable. Right. It's like many, many drinks like coffee, water, um, milk. They are uncountable, but we also use them as countable nouns. I'd like a coffee. I'd like a water. I'd like a beer, two beers, please. They're also used as uncountable nouns. Fantastic question, though. You're really on the ball. Nice. Thank you. OK, um, great. Yeah, Katie, a beer is countable if you add the word cup, but even without adding cup, right, or a glass, a glass of beer, we would say, rather than a cup, a glass of beer. Even without adding that, um, you, it still becomes a, a countable noun. We use it as countables, right? Same with coffee. Same with water. I'd like a water, please. Great. So a cue. What is a cue? A cue is a trigger. And what's a trigger? Good question. Um, a cue is something that tells you to do something, right? If my alarm goes off, dee -dee 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 -dee, that's a cue for me to stop the class, or that's a cue for me to get up, right? So my alarm goes off, that tells me to get up. It's a cue to get up, right? If I open the fridge and I see the beer, that, is a cue for me to take a beer and drink. The, the cold beer, it's like the cold beer is telling me to drink it. It's a cue to do something. Um, so that's how we use it, right? It's something that tells you to do something. Great. <laughs> OK. Boredom is to be bored. It's the noun, right? So if you if I take away this, whoops, oh no, that doesn't work. Sorry, that doesn't work at all. Wait a minute. Bored. I'm sure you know bored, right? Boredom is just the noun. So to be bored, you're fed up, not interested. Boredom is the noun. OK, OK, let's do the listening. I'm going to play the listening and I'll scroll and I'd like you to write down the answers. Let's do it. If you want to change a habit, you need to know the three stages of every habit, the cue, the routine and the reward. First, you need to identify the cue. For example, imagine you've fallen into the habit of drinking a couple of beers every evening when you get home from work. You're getting fatter and want to kick the habit. The cue might be a time, a place, something you see, or maybe something someone says. For example, you get home and think, it's 6pm, time for a beer. 
Or your wife, with all good intentions, says, You're home. Fancy a beer? Perhaps you open the fridge and see the nice cold beers waiting for you. And that's the cue to take one and have a refreshing drink. The routine is having the drink and the reward is the satisfaction that drink gives you. There are different things you can do to change this habit. Two of the most common ones are, first, remove the cue. Second, change the routine with something that gives the same reward. The first step could be to remove the cues. I mean, hide the beers out of sight, out of mind, right? Another step could be change the routine with something that gives the same reward. But to do that, you must know what the reward really is. So, if having a drink breaks the boredom, you could replace it with watching a film on TV or taking your dog for a walk. If the reward is quenching your thirst, you could replace the drink with a different cold and refreshing drink. So, what bad habit do you want to change and how will you do it? Right. Excellent. Good. Okay. Lots of ideas, lots of answers there. Can I go back? Oh, there are so many. Gosh. Well, this activity, actually, um, we also did on the website. And on Tuesday, I put some of this up on the website. Before I go back and just look at your answers, I am going to share some of the answers that were put up on the website. Let me just come and have a look. So this was, sorry, get on this page. Here we go. So this is on the website, the Keith Speaking Academy. Um, this was a link moderators. If you could share it as well, that would be great. So this is where you can find the lesson about habits. And here's some of the language we've looked at. And I put up here the listening task, the first part of the listening task, right? Just the very, very beginning. If you want to change a habit, da, da, dee, da, da. First, you need to identify the, the what. First, you need to identify the. And then we've got Akash Q. Well done. That was absolutely right. Um, Edirisinga, also Q. Well done. Hatis, behavior. First, you need to identify the behavior. Yes, actually, you could say that. That could also work. Yep. Uh, Mahashika habit. Mm. If you want to change a habit, first you need to identify the habit. It could also work. Yes. Uh, Ted Paying says the bad habitual action. Possibly, possibly, right? Um, and then it goes on. We were number two was, for example, <clears throat> imagine you have something into the habit of drinking. Imagine you have something into the habit of drinking. Imagine you have fallen into, says Tatbang. Good. Yosra says fallen as well. Absolutely. Muvendan says fallen. Fantastic. All these people spot on. Well done. Number three, you're getting fatter and you want to blank the habit. Of course, actually, I said kick, right? Like in the actual thing, I said kick. Sunshine says stop, which is possible. Uh, Jolly, quite? No, not quite. James says break is possible. Uh, Cho says give up, break or kick. All three of them. Fantastic. Very, very nice. Good. And number four. The cue might be a time, a blank. Might be a time or a, of course, the answer is a place, right? As some of you have said here, a place. Um, so a place. Sharmitsa said place. Well done. Nice. Uh, so Haib says someone, not someone, not someone, because someone comes next. Uh, reward. A cue might be a reward. No, not reward, Steve. Saba says, place well done. Exactly. That's it. And then number five, 
was perhaps you open the blank and see the cold beers of course five as you said is fridge right fridge well done Saba um, Tanja says fridge as well Parry says fridge so Haib says fridge you've all got fridge and there ooh, all the answers from Gaurav excellent great so listen thank you all of you I haven't seen all of you but thank you so much for all of the comments um, that you've put for answering the questions um, here on the website so remember every Tuesday I put up the, a little task for you to do on the website and we will then review it in the actual um, live lesson which is now so excellent let's go through and just have a look at the, all of the answers here and let me just fill this in for you so if you want to change a habit da, da, da. so we've seen number one Q number two fallen number three kick the habit number four a place number five the fridge or refrigerator is the big word but we normally say fridge now number six um, the routine is having the drink and the reward is the satisfaction that drink gives you right i talked about a sense of satisfaction it gives you satisfaction number seven hide the beers out of sight out of mind right that's an expression that means when you can't see something you don't think about it so if you open the fridge and you see the beers you think oh i'll have a beer if you open the fridge and you see an orange you go oh I'll have an orange if you hide the beers you don't think about it and so that can help you break the habit out of sight out of mind we use that for people as well if somebody a member of your family is far away you can say oh out of sight out of mind it's it's a bad thing right when you forget about people okay number eight was if the reward is quenching your thirst so to quench your thirst is to satisfy your thirst thirst is the noun thirsty i'm thirsty so if i'm thirsty i drink and my water will quench my thirst it will stop my thirst right but quench is a much nicer word let me quench my thirst okay brilliant now let me just check if you've got any other questions related <clears throat> quench quenching the meaning of quenching right is to stop your thirst quench your thirst they go together it's a collocation <clears throat> okay right so Naja, you're up already because this is my next question my next question then is what bad habit do you want to change and how will you do it right Naja says I have a habit nice I have a habit of eating junk food every day but I'm going to change that habit um, as eating my mama's food <laughs> by eating yes by eating my mama's food that's great you know for some people the habit of eating junk food is because if in your house you've got crisps and chocolate and cakes you're going to eat them and that's the cue when you see them you eat them so one way to break the habit is to hide just don't buy the junk food and then you're less likely to actually eat it okay <laughs> Cherry uh, Reyes, I do the live every Thursday at 10 o'clock, um, 10 o'clock Spain time, because I live in Spain. Great. Bazak says, I have a habit of procrastination. I would like to change it by using the Pomodoro technique for focusing. Very, very good. That's what I do. I use the Pomodoro technique. And if you don't know what it is, go and Google it and go and find out. Padia says, I play video games for many hours a day. I actually am going to replace playing the guitar with that. 
you mean you're going to replace that with playing the guitar it's the other way around yes that's what that's what you mean it's the opposite i i'm actually going to replace that with playing the guitar i got to correct myself playing the guitar normally instruments we play the guitar the piano that's great that's lovely because you're replacing it right so the the, the the reward probably is just to feel um, excited or to maybe to kill time right to kill some some boring time that's a great way of doing it excellent excellent we, who else have we got we do one or two more Nikhil I've fallen in the habit into the habit of spending more time on social media apps like Facebook for at least an hour each day however I have to kick that habit by keeping my phone out of sight. Fantastic. Very nice. Very, very nice. I'm just going to add in two there just to help you, Nikhil. Brilliant. And the last one I'll share, Beanish says, I have a habit of studying for hours. I'm going to replace it with smart study plans. Ah, right. So the habit is bad because it's too long, too much time. Replace it with smart study plans. I love it. Sounds very, very, very good. Excellent. Nice. Okay. Guys, I'm going to move us on. Um, I'm going to move us on to the next activity after the listening. And the next thing we're going to do is this one. Bear with me. So toolbox, this is where I'm going to share a learning tool with you. Um, I'm going to show you two things today. First one is about podcasts, right? And I actually love this set of podcasts. Um, I think it's really interesting and very useful for learners. So let me just share with you. It's called Qlips. Qlips, it's a strange name, I know. Um, and podcasts for all levels. The reason I like it is because they've got different podcasts at different levels, right? The website is esl.qlips.com and I'll just show it to you very, very briefly. Um, and moderators, if you could share this as well, if you could share the link so people can see it. Um, so basically, as you can see here, it's Qlips. They're different podcasts, over 600 episodes. So each of these is a different kind of podcast Chatterbox over here um, is nice because it's conversations. Let me go back. Sorry, that was too fast. English conversations at a normal speed, right? So it's actual natural English and it's an interview with somebody with an interesting story. Um, however, if you go to simplified speech, natural conversations while speaking slowly and clearly so it's actually not as fast as others but if you're at a intermediate or lower level this can be really useful right so you can check out the simplified speech podcasts um, and each one you know you can access them for free they've got topics like food there's a catch up there um, meeting a dog so very you know, simple but nice topics, and it's really simplified English, which is what I really like. Um, real talk, practical English expressions, right? For everyday situations you encounter in a speaking country. Great. And then they've got things like Speak Easy, teaches you how to perfect your accent and spear, speak in clear, comprehensible English. So it's a focus on pronunciation. Great. So Intonation, right? Useful. Pronouncing and hearing R and L. Very difficult for many Asian learners. Questions about minimal pairs. So these are, I think these are great podcasts. I mean, I, for such a, a variety of different podcasts in one place, it's really, really good. Um, and they're all for free. I mean, Qlips, they do have a membership. If you want to join, you can pay to join. And there's other things there. But if you just want to go and check them out first, 
I would recommend it. I think they're good. That's it. Culips. That's my tip for today. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> right. Um, the other one I was going to share with you that I forgot is is this website. Da, 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 da. Um, my listening passage was based on articles by James Clear. Now, if you haven't discovered James Clear, then today is going to be an important day for you because James Clear is an amazing writer <laughs> whose website doesn't exist. Of course it exists. Bear with me. <laughs> uh, James Clear, he writes about habits. He has pop-ups as well. Uh, the Habit Guide, How to Build Good Habits. So my listening was based on, on this these articles, right? But he's got topics about creativity, decision-making, focus. If you're into this kind of stuff, um, he's a great writer. He's well worth looking at. He's the guy who wrote Atomic Habits, which is also well worth um, well worth reading. I love his website because it's so minimalist. It's so easy to read. Um, but you can go in and access lots of stuff, all different articles. Um, a lot of it's about self-improvement, right? But I really like it. It's worth checking out if you're into that kind of stuff. <laughs> and I, I am to some extent. I do like it. Okay, brilliant. So what's next? What's next? Good habits and bad habits. Okay, so what's after that? After that, we've got, come here. I'm losing my balls. Listening task we've done. Tools we've just looked at. After that, idioms. We're going to have a quick look at some idioms before we go into the Kahoot game. So some idioms here. Yes, I love this book. Rika says, I love this book. It was recommended. Absolutely. Yes. Please don't spam, guys. Well, Apana, this is a good question. I'm going to answer in a minute. My next live. So now is a good time to tell you. Actually, next week, I'm taking some days off. So next week, I will not be working for some days, including Thursday. So there is no live class next Thursday. Whoops. Sorry. But I'm taking, it's the summer holidays. I'm spending a few days with the family. Um, I've got two holidays. I've got one now and one in August. So next Thursday, there is no class. The, the next live lesson will be the, Friday, the Thursday after, which I think is the 29th, if I'm not mistaken. Right. So the quick answer to you is the 29th of July is the next live. Thursday, 10 o'clock. Okay, I'll repeat that later as well. Um, good idioms. Thank you. Good. So stay with me just for a moment. We're going to go through some idioms here. <laughs> Great. Spending time with family is a good habit. It is, isn't it? It's a very good habit. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Idioms. I'm a creature of habit, the first one. So this is a, a common expression. Um, it just, we use that. Well, it, it is what it means, right? I'm a person who I like habits. I like to do the same thing every day in the same way, right? So some people always get up at the same time. They have the same breakfast. They, they do the same activity every day. They have the same kind of food for lunch. I'm a creature of habit, you know, it's just, it's what I do, right? Not necessarily me, I'm, I, I don't know if I am a creature of habit, but it just means I like to do the same things. I like routine, basically. I like my routines. <clears throat> um, I'm a stickler for, this is a nice expression. It's quite a difficult one, so I'll try and give an example. Um, I'm a stickler for, means that I I insist on something, right? Or I insist on, on certain things. 
So let me try and explain. I'm a stickler for hmm. for getting up early, for example, right? So I'm a stickler for getting up early. So it means I insist on getting up early. And we can use that if I'm talking about other people. So if I'm a stickler for getting up early, I want me to get up early. I want my family to get up early. Um, I want my students to get up early. I insist on doing things this way, right? Um, I'm a stickler for getting early, for getting up early. Um, I'm a stickler for doing exercise. Exercise every day. So it means I insist. And it, 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 the implication is that it's for me, but also other people. So you get a lot of bosses or managers saying, well, I'm a stickler for turning up to work on time. I'm a stickler for punctuality, or my boss is a stickler for punctuality. So it means my boss insists on punctuality. You must be on time. Um, my boss is a stickler for using WhatsApp, right? Never uses email, always uses WhatsApp. He's a stickler for using WhatsApp. So he insists on something. Another one, old habits die hard. Um, which means basically it's difficult to change a habit, right? When do we use this? Basically, when you have a habit that you find hard to change or you don't want to change, you say, ah, oh, I can't change. Old habits die hard, right? You say to your friend who's been smoking 20 cigarettes a day for the last 20 years, you say, come on, you really need to stop smoking. And they say, yeah, but you know, it's just so difficult. Old habits die hard. It's difficult to change a habit that you've had for a long time. And this expression, why break the habit of a lifetime? Um, why break the habit or why stop the habit that you've done for so long. We use this, <laughs> why break the habit of a lifetime? We use this to say, I don't want to change my habits, right? Um, even if they're good or bad. So let's imagine I have a beer with dinner every evening, right? It's not true, but imagine. And somebody says, oh, you shouldn't drink so much beer. And I say, well, why break the habit of a lifetime, right? It means I don't want to change the habit, right? I don't think it's necessary. Why break the habit of a lifetime? So basically it means it's not necessary to change my habit, to change that hobbit, husbit, habit. And the final one, often used at work, um, I'm stuck in a rut, which means I'm stuck in a boring routine. In a boring routine or in a bad place, excuse me, bad situation. Very often people who've done the same job for 40 years, they don't enjoy it, I'm stuck in a rut. You could use this if you're unfortunately in a marriage, you're married to somebody for a long time, but you're not happy and you just want to change. I'm stuck in a rut. So you're, you're stuck in a situation that you don't like, right? It's often used about work, but it can be used about marriage as well. Uh, keeping with tradition. Oh, how do I explain this? Why did I put this in? That's so hard to explain. <laughs> so this is used when we do something that we've always done, when we carry on with a habit or with a tradition, right? So typically, let's say, for example, in my family at Christmas, 
we always have turkey, right? It's a, a bird, roast turkey. Um, and so we, I would say on Christmas Day, well, keeping with tradition, we're going to have roast turkey. Means we're, we're going to follow the tradition or keep the, with the habit, right? I will continue with my habit or tradition. <clears throat> Just means I will carry on with the habit I've got, right? <clears throat> Keeping with tradition, I'll have a beer tonight. Suggesting I have a beer every night. Keeping with tradition, I'll have my live lesson on Thursday. Well, no, actually, I'm breaking with tradition because next Thursday I'm not doing the live lesson. So I'm breaking with tradition, right? Keeping with tradition or breaking with tradition. There you go. That's the opposite. When you decide not to continue the habit or at least stop it for, for one time. And then finally, practice what you preach Practice what you preach is do the things you tell others to do. It's kind of connected to habits, right? So some people, right, might say, well, you must listen carefully to others. But they don't do that. They just talk and talk and talk. And you say, listen, come on, you need to practice what you preach. If you're telling people to do that, you should do it too. You should practice what you preach. To preach is to tell. To preach is the, the word we use for priests who are telling other people about the religion um, and telling people how to live their life. And that's preaching. So practice what you preach. Papa, don't preach. <laughs> yes, that's Madonna's famous line, right? Yeah, don't tell me what to do. Papa, don't preach. Great. Keeping with tradition. This is nice, Matab. Great. Keeping the tradition. Keeping with tradition. Iranians celebrate uh, Noruz. Is that your new year? Keeping with. Keeping with tradition, right? Iranians celebrate Noruz. Great. Yeah, I'm a stickler for watching Keith on every weekend. Nice. Good. Very nice. Padilla, I literally learn more from Keith than the language school I attend. <laughs> Great. I'm glad you're learning. Keeping. Why is everyone saying the? Keeping with, right? Sorry, just let me make it. Keeping with. Make it clear. Breaking with. Or keeping with tradition. Don't worry, Sana. Don't worry. What I love is that you're practicing and you're trying. It's really good. We will cook mlahai in, in Eid. What's mlahai? Send me a photo. I'd like to know. Yeah, lovely expression for marriage. Well, unfortunately, it's a horrible expression, right? I'm stuck in a rut. Yeah. This is good. Steve says, I'm stuck in a bad routine, which is staying up late every day to enjoy the soccer match. It's good. Yes. You Maybe you're stuck in a rut with your studying, right? Like the person at the very beginning of the lesson said, I've been stuck at 6.5 for three years. They're stuck in a rut with their studying, right? Gosh. So some nice um, idioms there to talk about habits. Lovely. I'll let you carry on. You've got lots of comments. If there are any more idioms, I'll try and pick them out. But we're going to move on um, because I'm running out of time. I think I've already run out of time. But not to worry. We're going to move on to our last activity after idioms, which is, of course, the review. We're going to do a <laughs> A what? A kahoot. And in the Kahoot, we're going to review some of the language that we've been looking at today. So how does this work? If you don't know Kahoot, you're going to have to go here 
to kahoot.it. And we're going to do this in a moment. Let me just get my own Kahoot sorted out. It's basically a multiple choice game, right? I give you a question based on today's language. You have four choices. You choose A, B, A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. Chinese count like that. We count like that. You choose A, B, C, or D. Um, and log in. Come on. And you just choose one and see what's the right one. And then we're going to compete against each other. A bit of competition. So where is it? It's here. It just takes me a minute. So you need to go to kahoot.it, put in your name and a PIN number, which I will give you in a moment. And then we can start playing. Kahoot's a bit slow these days, isn't it? I've noticed. So here we are, we're just loading up. Um, I'll do personalized learning. You can use your own name, I think. So let's get ready to join. You can download the app if you want, or just go to kahoot.it. Remember, you need you need to keep watching me because <laughs> I've got the main screen. And the pin, what's the pin? Come on, Kahoot. Well, it's ever so slow today. Can't believe it. Well, I can believe it. Everybody's online. Oh, nice. I like it. Keith breaks with tradition as he didn't lead us to make a meditation today. Ha <laughs> That's true. Well spotted. So the pin is 7929299. Great. Sign in. Get your name in. Join the club. 7929299. I'll just give you a few seconds to, to get settled in. Mm. Great, Alexandra, you can play just by joining. Put your name and the uh, PIN number, 7929299. Thanks, everyone, for sharing it. Hello, Oratai from Thailand. Thanks, moderators, for sharing the link. I'll just give you a couple of seconds to get some more people in. If you can't get in to Kahoot, don't worry. Just put your answer in the chat box on YouTube or Facebook, depending where you are. When I get to 200, I think we'll start. Let's start, given the time. Gosh. Okay, let's do it. Habits. First question. I get up early every day by blank of habit. I get up early every day by blank of habit. Hello, Ricardo. Thank you very much. Hello, Harry. Nice to see you here. Yosra, thank you very much for that. Abda, well done. Arda, well done. I get up early every day by, yes, by force of habit. Well done. That's it. By force of habit. Most of you got it right. Excellent. Let's find out how we did. There's a scoreboard. IELTS is top, 858. Anna and Volia and James and Pooh, my favourite bear, are all close behind. Question number two. I'm trying to blank my smoking habit. I'm trying to blank my smoking habit. Right, be careful with this one. I'm trying to blank my smoking habit. 
Well done, Keo. Good and so. Right, well done. Oh, brilliant. I don't even have to explain. Look at that. 190 of, got, of you got it right. I'm trying to kick my smoking habit. One or two put give, but remember, give up. It has to be give up my habit. Well done. I like it. So, IELTS is still top. Anna, still second. James, Volley and Pooh, you're all in there. Very interesting. Rika is the highest climber. Let's move on. Number three. I spend hours on my phone. I can't help it. I'm a blank of habit. I spend hours on my phone. I can't help it. I'm a blank of habit. Yes, Fakuan, you're right. Some people are so fast. Mohiuddin, well done. Ainda, well done. Well done. I think the vast majority got that. It's a creature of habit. Must be. That's the only one here that fits. A creature of habit, right? You like your routines. Oh, Anna has snuck into first place. All the other guys are still there. This is like a monopoly. Nobody else can get in. Last question. My job is so boring. I'm stuck in a blank. My job is so boring. I'm stuck in a blank. <laughs> I'm stuck in an office. That's interesting. Right. Fantastic. Well done. 174 of you got. I'm stuck in a rut. Absolutely. I've just realised, actually, you could say I'm stuck in an office. No, you can't because it's a. Ha ha. You can't say that. If it was an, you could say an office, but you can't say a office, right? My job is so boring. I'm stuck in a rut. I'm in a bad place, bad situation. Great expression. Excellent. So let's see who are the winners. Everyone's a winner. IELTS down to third. Anna, oh, what happened? Which means... Yumiko, how did you do that? How did you come out of nowhere to win? Oh, well done. But very interesting. Fantastic. <laughs> Okay, nice, great. So, guys, that brings us to the end today. We've done a lot today, right? We've been talking about habits. Um, we've looked at vocabulary. We've been discussing what makes a good and a bad habit, um, as well as that listening task based on the James Clear website and his articles about habits. Go and check out James Clear. He's good. Tools, we've also shared with you Qlips, some great podcasts, Slow English, Simplified English and Real Natural English. Go and check them out. I think you'll really enjoy them. Um, idioms, we've looked at some very interesting expressions and we've discovered that you are all awake. Thank goodness you're still on your toes. Even after one hour and 45 minutes, you're still here, still focused. I am so impressed. Well done, everybody. Brilliant. So as we wind up, just to let you know then, um, next week, no live lesson. I'm taking a holiday next week, um, so there will be no live lesson. Um, the next lesson will be on, and I'll share this with you make it clear next live lesson on thursday the 29th of july okay um i will be doing a video on saturday of course um so you'll still get a video on saturday the video this coming saturday is actually all about idioms right different idioms you can use for any topic in ielts speaking whatever the topic you can use these idioms 
I think you'll like them. They're quite nice. Um, so have a look at that on Saturday. Um, do check out the website if you want to find out more about my work. It's the Keith Speaking Academy. Um, you can find out more about what I'm doing there. If you're interested in studying with me, I do have the online course um, over here, IELTS Speaking Success Get a Band 7. You can find the links on the website um, and you can study that with me. If you've got your test coming soon, it might help you. If you feel you want more from me, go and check that out. Um, and I think that's it. I think we're going to finish up here. Anything else I need to tell you? Other than, of course, if you're on YouTube, subscribe, <laughs> turn on the notifications. Always like to do that. Um, and I will see you very, very, not very, very soon. I will see you in two weeks' time, right? Brilliant. Take care, my friends. All the best now. See you soon. Let's go out with some music. <laughs>